السلام عليكم Umbilical cord development, postnatal changes, and congenital anomaly. Definition of umbilical cord. Umbilical cord is a band of mesoderm containing umbilical vessels and covered with amnion, connecting the fetus with the placenta. Development. The development of umbilical cord passes into two main stages and the other uh, last stage occurs in the intra-abdominal part after birth. Then we can put three titles for development of the umbilical cord, primitive umbilical cord, definitive umbilical cord, postnatal changes in the intra-abdominal part. Primitive umbilical cord. After folding of after folding of the embryonic disc, the connecting stook, this is the connecting stook, comes to lie on the ventral surface, come to lie on the ventral surface of the embryo. At the same time, as a result of expansion of the amniotic of the expansion, as a result of expansion of the amniotic fluid. This is the amniotic fluid. The connecting stook, connecting stook, vital line duct. This is the vital line duct connecting the gut with the definitive yolk sac. And the allantois. This is the allantois or uricus, which is represented as a small appendage passing into the connecting stook. After uh, folding of the embryo, uh, it uh, comes to lie ventral to the embryo uh, with the connecting stook and the vital line duct to form together the primitive umbilical ring. Then after folding of, again, after folding of the embryonic disc, the connecting stook comes to lie comes to light on the ventral surface at the same time as a result of expansion more expansion of the amniotic fluid the connecting stook the connecting stook come to lie on the ventral surface uh, and compressed together with the vital line duct and allantois to form together the primitive umbilical ring. Uh, then the, this is a uh, folded uh, embryo. Uh, this is the gut, which is part of uh, the secondary yolk sac. This is the definitive yolk sac, definitive yolk sac. This is the vital line duct. This is the connecting stook here with the blue color. This is the connecting stool, and this is the allantois. Together form the primitive uh, umbilical cord. Uh, then the umbilical cord at this stage is formed from the following structures. Connecting stool, connecting stool, which is uh, formed of mesoderm, connecting stool form of extra umbilical mesoderm as we know. Allantois and umbilical vessels, allantois, and surrounded with two pairs of umbilical vessels. This is called allantois. Vital line duct, vital line duct, and vital line vessels surrounded also with two pairs of vessels called vital line vessels. Take the same name of the duct. Vital line duct surrounded by two pairs of vital line vessels and loops of small intestine physiological hernia passing around the vital line duct. This is the structure of the primitive umbilical cord. This is the mesoderm of the connecting stook. This which here this is the allantois surrounded by two pairs of umbilical vessels. 
two arteries and two veins. And this is the vitaline duct, vitaline duct here. This is the vitaline duct surrounded by vitaline vessels. And this is a loop of herniated uh, intestine. This is the structure of the primitive uh, umbilical cord. Then we come to the uh, definitive umbilical cord, the second stage is the definitive umbilical cord. As we see, it is only formed, this is the definitive umbilical cord. As we see, it is formed uh, of uh, mesoderm, uh, which become loose to form what is called wartongili, and only three vessels, left umbilical vein and two umbilical arteries. As we see here, the vein carries a red color as it uh, carries the oxygenated blood, and the vein here uh, carries non-oxygenated blood. And uh, this is the reverse of the general rule, as we said before, that the arteries carry the oxygenated blood, while the veins carry non-oxygenated blood. Uh, this rule is reversed in two names the umbilical vessels here and, pulmon and pulmonary uh, vessels uh, after uh, birth. Before birth, here, umbilical, and after birth, the, the pulmonary, the, uh, there is a reverse, a reversed uh, passage of blood through the vessels. Uh, as we said, that the rule is the artery carry oxygenated and the vein carry non oxygenated, but this rule is reversed in the umbilical vessels before birth and pulmonary vessels after birth. Uh, uh, then the definitive uh, umbilical cord formed only of, uh, from one umbilical vein and two umbilical uh, arteries embedded in Walton gene. This occurs through the following changes. The mesoderm of the connecting spoke becomes loose connective tissue called Walton gel. This looseness, this looseness occurs to allow the expansion of the blood vessels here. Uh, uh, Alan Toys, Alan Toys is obliterated and the right umbilical vein disappears. Uh, vitaline duct, vitaline duct, also obliterated, and the vitaline vessels disappear. Herniated loop of small intestine, herniated loop of small intestine, return to the abdominal cavity. Uh, then we talked about the primitive umbilical cord and uh, the definitive umbilical cord, which is formed only of three vessels embedded uh, into Walton Gili and covered or encheased by uh, the amniotic membrane. Then we come to the postnatal changes in the intra-abdominal part. Postnatal changes in the abdo intra-abdominal uh, part, the after birth immediately after birth, the cord is ligated. The cord is ligated as we uh, know. Uh, uh, the, we leave a stump, uh, uh, its length about uh, uh, two or three finger breadths. The umbilical stump drop within two to, uh, within one to two weeks. Uh, then, uh, the intra-abdominal vessels and the intra-abdominal structures uh, undergo changes. Undergo changes. These changes, uh, what we mean by the postnatal changes in the intra-abdominal part. Uh, these are the changes. Are the uh, allantois or urecus. 
that we see uh, that we uh, uh, talked about it is obliterated and fibrosed is obliterated and fibrosed to form median umbilical ligament this is the allantois obliterated to form median umbilical ligament connecting the uh, umbilicus with the urinary bladder median umbilical ligament then the median umbilical ligament is uh, obliterated uh, urethus or allantois the name urethus yeah, nearly uh, uh, comes from the uh, word urinary uh, begin with you and urethus uh, with you the another name is allantois so obliterated allantois or urethus gives rise to the median umbilical ligament uh, the two umbilical arteries here the two umbilical arteries here this is the fetal circulation this is the umbilical vein that carries the oxygenated blood this these are the umbilical uh, arteries carry non-oxygenated blood to the placenta uh, these three vessels undergo changes the two umbilical arteries are obliterated are obliterated and fibrosed to form the lateral umbilical ligament here one umbilical artery or ligament and this is another uh, lateral umbilical ligament some author some author name uh, uh, this uh, ligament by the medial umbilical ligament and the names of all the covering the peritoneum overlying the inferior epigastric vessels as the lateral umbilical ligament like this uh, uh, this is the lateral umbilical ligament and this is uh, the uh, medial umbilical ligament but the uh, best name or most authors name this the lateral and this is a not a true ligament this is a fold of peritoneum elevation only of the peritoneum covering the inferior epigastric vessels so only there are three actually three uh, ligaments one medial umbilical ligament which represents the obliterated urethus and the two umbilical ligament one on each side is the lateral umbilical ligament that represents the obliterated umbilical uh, arteries uh, the another uh, change occurred in the umbilical vein in the umbilical vein uh, the umbilical vein remaining here is obliterated also the abdominal part after birth is obliterated and fibrosed to form ligament passing upwards towards the liver as we see this is the liver upward towards the liver called ligamentum tears ligamentum tears of the liver or round ligament of the liver this is the uh, ligamentum uh, tears of the liver that represents the obliterated umbilical vein. A growth, a growth anatomy of umbilical cord. Growth anatomy of umbilical cord. We talk about the length, about uh, 50 centimeter. Thickness, about 1 to 2 centimeter. The surface is smooth due to covering of the amniotic membrane or amnion sheath. Uh, this is the uh, cord. The, uh, this is the artery. This is the membrane uh, of the amnion or amniotic membrane. And these are the uh, vessels which include one umbilical vein uh, colored red as it takes oxygenated blood and two umbilical arteries uh, colored uh, blue as uh, they uh, uh, allow uh, they uh, carry non-oxygenated blood then the length is about half meter or uh, 50 centimeter 50 centimeter uh, thickness about one to two centimeter surface smooth smooth due to 
the uh, amnion sheath uh, enveloping the uh, umbilical mesoderm. The shape spirally twisted, spirally twisted about 40 turns, about 40 turns. Uh, this this uh, turns or this uh, twist is due to the umbilical vein. The umbilical vein here is shorter than the two arteries, so uh, making the umbilical cord uh, form uh, twists or turns about, as we said, 40 turns. The structure. As we said before, the structure include three umbilical vessels, three umbilical vessels. Two, uh, two uh, these include the vessels include two arteries and one vein, embedded in loose mesoderm, which called Waltongiri, and she is the by amniotic member. This is the umbilical cord connecting the placenta with the uh, fetus. This is the umbilical cord and uh, show the normal twists as we said as we see congenital anomalies of the umbilical cord uh, when we talk about the congenital anomalies of the umbilical cord we talk about the congenital anomaly of the cord itself congenital anomaly about the attachment of the cord to the uh, body of the fetus and congenital anomaly about the attachment of the cord to the placenta. So we divide the congenital anomaly into three main types. Congenital anomaly in the cord itself, congenital anomaly in attachment to the uh, fetus or embryo, congenital anomaly in attachment to the placenta. Then abnormalities of the cord itself include include uh, the length of the cord and also uh, the shape of the cord as uh, uh, we will talk about uh, this uh, abnormalities in the cord attachment to the embryo include congenital umbilical hernia vital line vistula urethral fistula Abnormalities in the umbilical cord attachment to the placenta include eccentric attachment, marginal attachment, and membranous attachment. Congenital anomalies of the umbilical cord. Abnormalities in the umbilical cord itself, as we said, as regard the lens. Uh, as we said before, the normal lens is about 50 centimeters. Long umbilical cord means uh, more than 60 centimeter the long umbilical cord carries many dangers that include as we see prolapse of the cord through the genital tract leading to difficulty in labor so the first is the prolapse of the cord the second is wrapping the cord around the neck of the fetus or around the body of the fetus or around itself or around itself. This leads to this case as we see as we see uh, lead to asphyxia and might result in death of the uh, fetus during birth if we uh, not notice it. Uh, when we notice it during birth, uh, just uh, introduce your finger when uh, you attend the vaginal birth uh, uh, between the neck and the umbilical uh, cord to prevent compression of the cord on the uh, fetal neck during birth. and to prevent the fetal asphyxia. Uh, uh, the second is short umbilical cord. The, uh, the length is less than 30 centimeters. Less than 30 centimeters. Also, this 
anomaly carries risks that include that include premature separation of the placenta. This is the fetus. This is the umbilical cord. This is the placenta attached to the upper part of the uterus. This is the wall of the uterus. And when the umbilical uh, cord is short and this is the fetus by its weight, it pulls uh, the placenta before the head comes out the genital tract, leading to premature separation of the placenta and might result in uh, bleeding before uh, labor or may result in uh, fetal uh, asphyxia. This is the first uh, risk of short uh, umbilical cord. Uh, also, uh, may result in rupture of the cord itself. The cord due to uh, uh, are caused by the weight of the fetus uh, and the placenta is more or less adherent might result in cutting or rupture of the cord during uh, period and uh, this also might uh, be endanger the life of the fetus. The third, the third might result in inversion of the uterus. Inversion of the uterus. This is the fundus of the uterus. The fundus of the uterus, as uh, we know, is uh, bulged uh, upward or outward, as we see, uh, like the dome of uh, the fem. Uh, this in, is inversion. The dome or the fundus is reversed is reversed or inverted or inverted uh, inward. This is the inversion of the uterus. Now, when the inversion of the uterus is marked or fourth degree, might result in prolapse of the uterus outside the vagina, as we see. Uh, inversion of the uterus might be risky for the uh, mother as it uh, result in atomy of the uterus and might result in uh, postpartum hemorrhage. Uh, we reduce it immediately like this, immediately and catch the uterus till it uh, retains it, uh, its, uh, uh, its firm uh, consistency to prevent uh, postpartum hemorrhage. Then, uh, anomalies of the umbilical cord include the lens, long cord, and short cord, and uh, in both cases, they might carry risk to the mother or uh, her fetus. Uh, the congenital anomaly in the cord itself also, as we said, include the shape the umbilical cord shape. Umbilical cord shape includes nodes, either false or true. False nodes means just localized collection of white and jelly in the umbilical cord, as we see. Localized collection of the umbilical cord. True nodes, this is uh, uh, true nodes of the umbilical cord, and this, my, uh, this also uh, uh, dangerous. False call, false uh, notes, uh, uh, false uh, notes. This, as we said, second uh, localized thickening of the umbilical cord. They are localized collection of white and jelly. It is of no uh, significance. But this is a true notes. Uh, this may res result from, as we said before, from too long cord. That may that may be tightened and uh, cause fetal death. Uh, so we must differentiate between the false uh, nodes, which uh, of no sig uh, clinical significance, and the two nodes that uh, might uh, result in uh, risk for the fetus. And uh, when we see it, uh, must uh, relieve this uh, nodes. Uh, before uh, causing risk for the fetus or uh, 
uh, when the fetus is delivered without risk, cut the umbilical cord uh, as uh, usual. The uh, second congenital anomaly are uh, abnormalities in the umbilical cord attachment to the embryo. Uh, include congenital umbilical hernia here, congenital umbilical hernia. This is congenital umbilical hernia in the umbilical cord here. Uh, this is after uh, drop of the umbilical stump. Uh, uh, this is, uh, this uh, might be the cause for uh, when we cut the umbilical cord after birth, leave a stump of about uh, two to three uh, fingers width uh, to avoid to avoid injury of the uh, prolapsed intestine through the congenital umbilical ring, um, congenital umbilical hernia. Uh, when we uh, discover congenital umbilical hernia in uh, the, uh, new need, uh, no surgical interference uh, needed as uh, uh, the abdomen enlarged and uh, mostly the hernia uh, is reduced by the time. The second is uh, vitiline fistula. Vitiline fistula. Vitiline fistula, uh, as we said before, this is a uh, division of secondary, uh, uh, secondary yolk sac into definitive yolk sac here and the gut here. The two parts are connected by the vitiline duct here. The vitiline duct, as we said in the uh, development of the umbilical cord, obliterated, obliterated and disappeared. When it uh, remains patent, uh, result in what is called vitiline fistula, connecting the ileum or the intestine with the umbilicus, and this might result in discharge of fecal content. As in, the vitiline fistula might result in discharge of pieces of stool. Uh, uh, this is a fistula. The third is urethral fistula. Urethral uh, fistula. Uh, urethral fistula uh, may result in discharge of urine at the umbilicus. Urethral fistula, uh, as we said, uh, the uh, median umbilical ligament is obliteration of the urethras or allantois, uh, as we said in the development of the umbilical cord. The urethras uh, is obliterated, is obliterated, and for median umbilical ligament connecting the apex of the urinary bladder here with the umbilicus here. Failure of obliteration of the urethras or allantois might result in patent urethras connecting the urinary bladder with the uh, umbilicus and this result in discharge of urine at the umbilicus and uh, must be surgically repaired. Uh, vitiline fistula and uh, urethral fistula must, must be uh, surgically repaired. But congenital umbilical hernia, we uh, observe the child uh, even uh, to the age of the six year uh, mostly, as we said, the uh, umbilical herniation uh, reduced spontaneously. Then the last congenital anomaly is, as we said, abnormalities in the umbilical cord attachment to the placenta. This includes three degrees or three types, uh, eccentric insertion, the normal insertion of the umbilical cord is nearly at the center of the uh, placenta. This is the umbilical cord, this is the placenta, nearly at the center of the placenta, as we see. Uh, the, uh, 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 the anomalies include eccentric insertion of the uh, attachment of the cord. The cord is attached away from the center of the, of, the, of the placenta. This is the insertion of the cord away from the, uh, from the center of the uh, placenta. The second is marginal, marginal attachment of the cord. As we see, the cord is attached to the margin 
of the placenta to the margin of the placenta. The third is membranous attachment or membranous insertion of the cord. The cord in, not inserted into the placenta but inserted into the membrane and the blood vessels passes to the placenta as we see. This is the insertion of the cord into the membrane like this, into the membrane like this. This is membranous insertion of the cord or cold or cold filamentous insertion of the cord. This might uh, be uh, of uh, risk for uh, the mother and her fetus. Uh, uh, it might it might uh, be uh, ruptured uh, before uh, birth. So uh, its uh, diagnosis antenatally is important to be careful uh, in dealing with this case. These are the anomalies of the uh, of the umbilical cord. Thank you.